Yo ho ho! It's the worm. It's still the worm. It's still here. Uh, here's going to be yet another video where you have to listen to fans and generators through the whole thing. Man, it's uh, starting to get really freaking cold. And I'm still trying to get the humidity in the cabin down just a little bit. I still got the bottom boards from the wall taken off and the uh, insulation opened up. It's been like that for a week. I, I think I'm going to leave it like that until the last possible minute. Like if I have to put one of those on, I'll throw the wall back together. But, you know, in the meantime, I might as well get as much moisture as I can out of that place. Yesterday morning, I had the humidity in there down to 49%. It started at somewhere in the 70s. I mean, it was, it was like a freaking steam room in there but I brought it down over 20% and then I dug out some boards out of the, the wood pile here. This tarp's pretty beat, so although it looks like it'll hold some snow off of it, when anything melts, it kind of goes right through. And I had some three quarter inch cedar left in there and a bunch of scraps. So since I might use some of it for building pretty soon, like making my bed, not just hold, shh, just wait a minute, it's too loud. <laughs> I'm walking around out here with my slippers on. Oh, that's not any better. It's noisy in here too. I still got, I got the uh, dehumidifier and three fans going. Just for like, I don't know, maybe six hours a day at the warmest part of the day. Let's see what our temp or our humidity is down to, 55%. We brought it back down. So I dragged these boards, what's that, like four there and then two or three more here. The rest is picnic table and the extra uh, huge two inch cedar boards that I'll use for something in here. But I brought all these in and they were ice. Like, not, not that the wood was frozen, it was all ice, like a solid sheet, both sides. I had to stack them all here and put, uh, yeah, I had to put garbage bags underneath them. And even with the garbage bags, I had to man it. I had a big, one of those big peanut sponges and I just, I had to be here constantly with my headlamp on because it would just puddle out and try to run off the sides soak it up go out ring it come back and there'd already be more water it was probably it was probably a quart of, of water that came off of those and so here's the weird thing is the t the uh, humidity was pretty consistent in here about 50 percent for half the day i brought those in and within an hour or an hour and a half it went from 50 up to like 64 percent so it's, it's interesting to me because this was all made with frozen green lumber. After I milled it, I just put it right up and it was all icy too. So it's amazing that just that many uh, wet boards in here could make that big a difference to the humidity. And I mean, it makes me feel good because a lot of the water and ice that was in the walls is probably gone now. So I'm still uh, recovering from my uh, broken rib, my fall on the stairs out here. I want to start doing some heavy work, the stuff I like doing, the tree cutting and the milling and whatnot, but I don't know, I think I'm going to give it one more week, so I'm just trying to think what could I do in here that needs to be done before I actually start living in here but doesn't require a lot of heavy lifting. One thing I'm going to miss about the man cave is the man cave, I've, I've built this elaborate system over the heater to dry everything out. Actually, let's go look at that real quick. No, actually. Let's look at this first. So this heater does radiate quite a bit. Like you can easily feel the heat a foot and a half, two feet out. But most of it's, uh, what would that be, convection? You can feel it coming up off the top of it. So, I mean, basically from as high as I can reach down to right at the heater, uh, that's my drying corner right there. The propane stove in the man cave, you know, like a wood burning stove, you have to have room all the way around it. So you just kind of have a bigger area and it's right in the corner so the heat i don't know it just it puts out a ton of heat right there i dry out my towel from my shower my gloves every day get wet have to put them in there also every single night i have to take my boots apart pull the liners out I mean, it's just a great area for doing that so we got to recreate that here somehow but before we get out the circular saw and the screw gun let's go take a take a look in the man cave i'll show you my drying department that generator is a little bit undersized for running a circular saw or the planer. It just barely does it, but it's nice that it just, you can uh, idle it down and just have it run at the lowest RPM possible for the draw that you have on it. And the cool thing is running a fan, charging my Ryobi batteries, 
and powering the dehumidifier. That thing, you know, if I let it run for eight hours a day, it might use one gallon of gas. It's not bad. So this is my drying corner. You guys saw, I'm pretty sure there's a video of building this thing, this big drying rack. That's fantastic. However, I actually use all the hooks and shelves more than that. Right now it's just kind of a place to store, <laughs> store extra clothes. But yeah, the hooks around here, uh, this one's perfect. It's always the cuffs of your snow pants that get uh, all icy and wet. Those dry out in about an hour there. And these get used a lot, these not even really shelves, that's part of the way I framed the wall. Um, if I don't have this stuff here, you know, like my Nutella and my butt wipes and my barbecue sauce and syrups, if they're not here, they're unusable. Yeah, even I have to keep all my dish soap there too. And if the temperature's under, once it gets down to like the mid 20s, without the cabin, I just have to leave that uh, propane stove on super, super low and just keep it above 32 or, you know, stuff like that. You got to do dishes. You want to wash your hands. You can't do it. The, you know, dish soap's frozen solid. This is also on the coldest days. I leave four gallons of water there. And then this is the one I use for like hand washing and stuff. They sit there and never freeze. But if you go over here, some more water under there like uh tonight's supposed to be two or three degrees and those will freeze even if the air up top is above freezing you'll see when it gets really cold this floor will just have ice crystals on it i do still have some more of this uh chicken wire i think i have like half a roll of it and this stuff made that just so you wouldn't uh your clothes wouldn't get burned if they touch the stove pipe so we could do yeah we could do some sh what if we did like two shelves like that even if it was only like this deep, like if the wall was here, you could just have it come out like that. And then another one. Then you could throw your gloves on it. Uh, maybe we can put some hooks underneath one. I don't know, it's still not gonna dry out this kind of stuff very well. <sighs> Is this the most thinking you've ever uh, seen me do? I don't like it. I think we should just start chopping and cutting. Let's see where that, oh yeah, I still have uh, a whole roll here. That ought to be plenty. I mean, I of course could make the shelves normal, just out of wood, out of cedar boards, but it'd be nice if the heat went up through it. Cool, let's do that. I got a whole pile of uh, frozen wood scraps too. Oh man, if I can even get them out of there. <laughs> it rained yesterday and then the temperature dove. So now even the snow that's not packed, you can walk right on top of it. And that's covered in the same stuff. I don't even know if I can get that out of there, but. We can definitely build this whole thing with scraps. Man, we could even uh, build it out of these throwaway scraps. There's probably some stuff in there that we could use. For those of you that uh, watch me building this desk in here, you may know I don't really like bracing. I don't really like legs on stuff because I'm always, you know, in a small area, you need all the storage you can get. And legs on stuff just seem to be always in the way. Like you want to stick a couple Tupperware totes under your bed, but it only fits one in seven eighths of a tote. Do you remember this desk? I had a temporary leg on here and then I ripped it off and made braces that go diagonally. I guess that's that's as good as I could do at the time. And for all the shelving in here, I had this hope that I could figure out how to use like two inch fat boards and attach them right to the wall and have zero support. So it was just like floating out there. I think I could do it if I had a welder out here and some rebar, I think I could make something. But if this is just a skinny frame with mesh on top, I think it's going to have to have supports underneath it. So maybe we just see what size scraps I have will come out, go down. I guess we could go, shoot, we could go almost that whole length. Or maybe I'll bring it in a foot here and bring it in a foot there and then the shelves that go on the back wall can go all the way to the end. God, there are just so many options, you know? Oh man, it got uh, too dark last night to see anything to actually build in the cabin or film, so I knocked off. Let's try this again, shall we? It's, uh, it's freaking freezing. I just ate breakfast. It's like 11 or something. It's so hard to get going on uh, mornings that are this chilly. It's especially a struggle when you're always trying to make French toast in the morning. And it's only 4 degrees and crack the eggs into the bowl and they immediately freeze.
I know, I, you guys have the same problems, I'm sure. I was just trying to think of what to build these racks out of, or these uh, shelves. And I remembered that several, several weeks ago I went digging for scraps and I dug one of the tarps out over here. That's the, let's see, that was all pine. Oh, it was the pine that I framed. Oh, I think I made the, like this, it was all that same pine. Those are like 14 inches wide right there. Big fat guys and something else in here. And there's a whole bunch of it left over and you know scraps and whole boards and whatever so I dug that out and it's been under there for a long time so it was gnarly. Uh, I remember I, I brought it all out here and ran the planer over it just to freshen it up a little bit get some of the garbage well here I'll show you. So I think that whole freshened up pile of crap is still under here. Of course, it's rained and snowed since then, so they're all probably icy and wet, but let's see. Oh yeah, we got some good stuff, kind of two by four-ish looking. Oh yeah. <laughs> wet and frozen. Hopefully I don't use all this up so we can still build a bed out of it. Nice and crispy. So I got a pretty good variety. I think this will work. I don't really want to use any of the super square stuff like actual 2x4 looking lumber. Those are the cutoffs I think from the wall framing. Uh, this, this kind of stuff would look cool. Pine's really not that pretty. And this is something you're going to see in the cabin, so I want to use the weirdest stuff possible like this. This is actually how it came out of the tree. See how the sapwood has that crazy color? But that'll look nice. If not nice, at least kind of weird. So yeah, let's use those. We could use that one. Yeah, that's got a live edge on it. I guess I could always uh, kind of build this thing and then maybe just knock the edges off with sandpaper. And maybe if I put varnish on it later, it would look not like a bunch of pine two by four throwaways. And then for the bed, not sure how I'm gonna do that yet. I think I think one inch cedar would make a good like platform. So, you know, if you do one inch cedar, that's like seven feet long. You gotta have something in the middle it's gonna give. So I was thinking I'd just do some kind of pine frame. Oh, I guess I have this huge thing left. That could be ripped up. That's like uh, six inches there and maybe eight on that end. And it's 12 feet long. Oh, that's got a live edge too, but underneath the bed, it won't really matter what I use. <laughs> Man, these keep, uh, these keep coming back up. Oh, it's got a lot of holes in it. These were uh, throwaway pieces that I used to brace the stud walls. I put the walls up and they keep getting recycled. This was then a hook clothes rack behind the door. Now we could reuse it again, I guess. I'd have to, yeah, this needs to be replaned if it's gonna go in there. It's really dirty and gross. so icy it's hard to cut straight. Look at that. <laughs> Guess I'll make these all uh, same length. I have to cut out some knots here. Not going to be quite as long as I hoped.
just pretty this gross thing up real quick. ever watch uh, Survivor Man? Used to love that show. It always used to. Uh, it didn't bother me, but <laughs> it sort of bothered me that he would say, man, this would be so much easier if I didn't have to film the whole thing. I'm like, come on, don't tell us that. We don't need to see behind the curtain. And then, you know, you do this, the temperature gets down to single digits. And just keeping a camera out on a tripod is such a pain in the ass. If it sits out there for more than, I don't know, five minutes, the thing will just shut down with full battery. Okay, I get it. You don't care. Also, since this stuff never got dried out, I think I'm going to have to pre-draw all the holes because it's all still, oh yeah, sheened with ice. All right, so we got one against the wall, one in the front. So we'll go kind of like this, like this, and I cut the, one set of those, decided on three, one for each end and one for the middle. I don't know why, but I made one set 12 inches and one 18. I don't know, just to make it look interesting. So let's see. Oh yeah, this one's got a chainsaw hole in it. Ah, that's, rustic is in, right? Let's see, should we make all the the uh, live edges face the room? Maybe like that, like that. Like that, like that. I wonder if these are gonna split being frozen. I didn't quite pre-drill all the way through. Well, let's try one, see what happens. Didn't break. think should we finish one to make sure it works before we build another one nah let's just go for it it'll work out you know for a cabin that I'm trying to make exceedingly gorgeous and shiny I gotta admit this looks kind of garbagey I'll have to figure out some way to pretty it up Let's do something pretty this up a little bit, looking wonky. So this is going to go upside down like that. I don't really like seeing this stuff sticking out. And that, maybe we, oh man, I could chainsaw it off, but I can't start the chainsaw because of my rib. What else could we use? Maybe a sawzall? I'd like to just do this with a grinder and like a 30 grit disc on there, but since this is all wet, it's not really going to grind. I mean, I could use it to take the saw marks out of it. Hmm. Whew. That's ugly, but I'll make it better. Yeah, that's what you get when the wood's wet. doing a little test here. It's not really a test because I know the outcome, but 
every time I touch this stuff, my gloves get really wet. And then I go out there and they freeze <laughs> on my hands. They get all stiff. So I'm uh, switching them out. Let's see. It's been 10 minutes. Completely dry. Everything dries out so much faster now that I got the humidity down a bit in here too. I think it's because it's cold. I don't know. It's down to 45%. Started at somewhere in the 70s. I'm not running the dehumidifier and fans today because it's so cold and with an uninsulated floor. The floor is basically frozen. And what needs to be dried out is basically that bottom plate there, which they're all dry to the touch now. There are no puddles or pools or anything, but I don't want to put the insulation back down and close it all up until I got those bottom plates pretty dry. I've been using a moisture meter on them. They're down to like 15 or 16%, which isn't horrible, isn't great. It's interesting the difference between this kind of heater and the heater that I've got in the man cave, which is just that cheap like ice fishing heater, you know, with like two grill elements in it. These both vent to the outside, so the one in the other place has a chimney that goes up and vents the uh, gases and water vapor and stuff, and this one vents right outside too. You probably saw that little thing that sticks out the outside of the wall, and the exhaust goes out, I think the inside of it, and then around the outside of that, it sucks cold, cold air back in. And the difference between those and the buddy heaters, you know, the little heaters you can use like an ice shanty or something, I use, I've used it in my tent, the last couple winters, use it in the shower. The Deer Castle has one too. Those are catalytic, so you can't kill yourself with carbon monoxide. But just a regular propane stove, one of the byproducts is water vapor. So like if you run a buddy heater, a couple buddy heaters in here, the humidity just goes up and up and up the more you use it, which is kind of screwy because you're using the heat to thaw the place out, but it's making the humidity much worse. So. It's cool. It's cool having a real heater in here, not having to worry about that stuff. Ooh, there might barely be enough to do this. I'm getting toasty. Maybe we should uh, tape the edge of these. Bent all the ends over, but I could totally see ruining some clothes on here. What do you think? Gorilla tape? What do you think? That'll do, right? That ought to dry some socks. Ah, plenty. Well, let's see. I guess I was thinking the wide one would go on top. The wider it is, the harder it is to get your hand up to the back of it, though. Oh, you know, the other thing, I love waking up in the morning and standing right by a heater <laughs> like this for a half an hour. So I guess it's going to have to be at least up there. What do we do, the narrow one there? Maybe I'll just have to make a stool to get to the top rack. 
About like that, maybe? What do you think? Good? Can't whack my head? All right, let's do it there. Somebody hand me that drill. Quick. Ah, I guess I'm not gonna worry too much about centering it on anything either. We'll just, we'll just guess that right there is about right. Oh, you know it'd be a good idea is to get the level before I do this, get it up there. Don't have enough hands. Need some more hands. Let's see if I can do this with only the hands I have at hand. What do you think? A foot in between there is enough? Maybe even less. How much space do you really need between there? Not much, right? Just fit some gloves and some clothes and stuff. Oh, so awkward. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Wow, these might not need uh, braces on them. That's staying up by itself with only one screw in it. That seems really close together, doesn't it? Eh, let's just go for it. Let's not overthink things, eh? Doesn't look too bad. Nice and weird. Oh wow, the front of it's really high. It needs reverse braces. Well, that's all right, it'll probably sag over time. That looks kind of cool. That's what I was hoping for, some kind of free floating look. I mean, there's this corner has a little more give than the others, but I think it's going to hold. Oh yeah, that one's really strong. I think that's going to hold anything I need to dry. I guess if you leave a little bit hanging off the edge, you could get to it. I think it also needs some kind of hooks around the bottom of these. It'd be nice to be able to like hang jackets right there. What do we have for hooks? I'm out of uh, masonry nails, those square nails I like to use. This is what I try to use for all my hooks because they're cheap and they look really cool. Every day I keep building on this place, I become more and more aware of the fact that there's going to be a lot to take apart if I really want to plane and finish all these walls. If I want to take it off and plane this, this has to come off, which is fine. I put it together with screws so it actually comes off in uh, like one piece. If I want to finish those boards, plane and varnish them. This has to come off. I mean, shoot, even when I want to put the roof, the ceiling on here, this is going to have to come down. I already had to take the corner trim off to get to those. And yeah, I mean, in order to plane that board, that board's going to have to come off. Like, I'm going to have to take the entire cabin apart. Everything. Every single stick of lumber is going to have to come out of here. I'm going to do it. I swear I'm going to do it because I really want this all varnished. I don't know why. It's ridiculous. It's going to take weeks to do. And it's a 200 square foot cabin in the woods, in the middle of nowhere, with no power, no water, no roads, nothing. I still think it would be... I mean, that's the reason I think it would be cool to have the whole thing just completely tricked out and varnished. Man, is it going to be a lot of work. It'll be different though. Maybe in the middle of the summer. You know, it'll be easier because I can take this stuff down and actually put it outside. What else am I going to do with my time? You know, it might be about time. Don't you think this is maybe my most important tool? <laughs> I don't think I've ever been in a more flammable structure. 100% wood, except for the tar on the roof. And all of it, inside and out, is nice, dry, lightweight cedar. I mean, I guess this is only for if you see the corner catching fire, you might be able to squirt it out. If you're not in here when it happens, you wouldn't have a chance. Just there to make me feel a little better. And maybe it's time we actually hang it up. It's not like stuffed in a back corner when you actually need it. kind of want some shelves there or something. How about right there? What do you think? Oh... Much better, much better. Whew. 
Man, I didn't want to use garbage nails for my uh, clothes hook, so it took a while to find them. Actually, Tito was out, and at some point in the day, he's like, oh, I've had these in my pocket all day, and he pulled out a box full of uh, masonry nails. Like, I, I don't I don't get it. How did you, where did they come from? <laughs> Somehow he knew I was looking for them. I don't know, and he found them out in the deer castle, and he was staying out there. So we've got masonry nails, and I, I thought of a... Uh, I'm kind of starving right now, and I thought of another great use for these drying racks. I was digging through my food stash. I found half a tray of cinnamon rolls. Let's see how this works, because they're frozen solid. Put those right about there. Crank this baby up. How long does I have to cook there? Maybe 20 minutes? Just wait for the timer to go off, and uh, we'll see. I bet they'll get... Well, they'll definitely get unfroze, but... I think that's going to work well. I think that's going to become a thing. That bottom rack is just for heating up your food. Or actually, I could put another really small rack right there. Maybe I should do that. Would that be in the way of anything? Just for like quickly heating up your food or like before you put your frozen socks on in the morning, you could throw them on there or your t-shirt or something. Well, let's try uh, pounding some nails in here and hanging some clothes and see how much room is left. Actually, I've got these too. These are masonry nails. I mean, they don't look anything like the flat ones. They're kind of cool, but I think they would just look like nails sticking out of the, the frame there. These are the cool ones. This is a little bit shorter than what I was using before. The long one and the short one. I don't know. I guess we're just going to go for it. We'll just use these short ones. Oh, that's not going to work. Can't get any angle on that. Well... I can get a different drill set up, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to pound those in. Well, let's try. This is like one of the most useful tools. Put a screw bit in there, or a drill bit. Can I swing it? Oh yeah. Perfect. See how classy that is? Very classy. <laughs> Anytime I work over top of this heater and it's turned on, you get a little bit of sawdust. Somehow it's sucking it in there. You get like a nice uh, potpourri cedar incense smell. It's very nice. Probably not very good for the heater though. Five more minutes. See, don't the square nails look great? Man. It's a little bit like it needs braces, but I think I'm gonna go with it. If I have to brace it, I could brace it later. I'm gonna go get everything that I have in the man cave and hang it on here and just see if it actually would dry out. Should I bring the peanut butter and soap and all that stuff too? Probably. You know what I just thought of? <laughs> this place is gonna be heated everywhere. Unlike the man cave, I turn the heater on for a couple hours a day and you gotta use the heat that goes up to keep whatever you need from freezing and dried out. I could put peanut butter over there and it wouldn't freeze. Oh, crazy. So even the soap won't freeze once it's in here. So the drying rack is really just for drying stuff out, which would be like my boot liners, my gloves, my bibs, my towel. Let's try it. So let's see, you go like that. Oh, that does not feel good on my broken rib. Just called the doctor's office to see if I can get an x-ray. I don't really do anything for broken ribs, just let them heal, but this one's like sticking far enough out of my back that I think, uh, I don't know, it might need some attention. I kind of can't imagine if it actually heals, like, sticking out like that. That's not going to be a problem in the long run, but we'll see. Boot liners, of course. You put those right next to the uh, cinnamon rolls. And the towel is the one thing that's soaking wet. Ooh. That would dry out nicely. Oh. What else we got? Oh, yeah. Hand towel. That's an easy one to dry. Oh baby, this is gonna work. And some wet gloves. Check it. And if you want your jacket warm for you before you go out in the morning, sweet. 
Now we just gotta know. Let's see what happens. I am way too hungry to wait anymore. Oh, I can see they're a little sweaty. Oh yeah, not frozen anymore. I've invented the microwave. Isn't that something? This is quite a success. It's amazing how much you can do with the propane heater. You can do it with wood burning too, but what happens if you break a rib? You can't chop and carry wood. Propane. Well, that was as low key a project as I could think up. I think um, now that I got the heat cranked in here, I'm gonna put the bottom boards back on all the walls and then tomorrow, it's supposed to be gnarly weather for the next couple of days, but I was thinking about starting to build my bed. If I can get all the lumber ripped, uh, just from milled boards, rip the edges off uh, in the next day before it really gets snowy and super cold, I could build that in here with the heat on. And actually, if I could get it finished, usable in the next today and two more days, that night is gonna be like five below zero. I'd love not to be staying in the tool shed out there. It seems really weird to heat that a few hours with the propane stove in there and at the same time have the heat on in here but not be using this place. So if the bed's done, I mean, that's kind of all I need to do in here to move in, right? After that, it's just building some shelves. Who knows when I'll get to the uh, ceiling. I don't have enough three quarter inch milled up lumber yet for that anyway. And doing this kind of stuff on a ladder overhead with a bad rib is uh, probably a pretty bad idea. So if we forget about that, it's a bed and then move in time. We're getting there. It's only, uh, it's not quite a year I've been working on this thing since I cut the first trees. If I could actually be sleeping in here in under one year, I, well, I'd say it's, it'll make me very happy. It doesn't matter when. I'll get in here at some point and probably have this thing to use for the next 30, 40, 50 years. So who cares when it gets done, right? Thanks for watching. You guys want any uh, cinnamon rolls? I got more than I could eat, right? You don't? Yeah. Okay. That's fine. See you next week.